الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله from the pearls of the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which emphasize the importance of sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why many of the collections of hadith in the books of the ulama of the past began with this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam An Amir al-Mu'mineen Abu Hafs Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala in قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما أعمال بالنيات وإنما لأمر منوى فمن كانت هجته إلى الله ورسوله فهجته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجته للدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة ينكحها فهجته إلى ما هجر إليه رواه شيخان in the hadith of Umar ibn al-Khattab where he said, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, saying, verily actions are tied to the intentions and everyone will get that for which he intended. Therefore, he who migrates for Allah and his messenger has migrated for Allah and his messenger. And he who migrates for some worldly matter or to take some woman in marriage will get that for which he intended. This is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, the scholars have mentioned countless benefits. And we're just gonna look at just a few basic benefits that we can gain from this hadith and add to our practice. And the first being that this hadith is evidence for the importance of one's intentions in worship. And that the intention, the place of one's intention is in the heart. And that uttering one's intention, for example, if you say I'm praying Right before Salat, Salat al-Dhuhr, you say, I'm going to pray Salat al-Dhuhr as your intention. And uttering it, I'm going to pray four rakat, and so on and so forth. That this is a bid'ah. This was not from the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, nor the Sabil al-Mu'mineen, nor the Salaf al-Saleh. And... So what we learn from this hadith is the place of the niyyah, the intention is in the heart. And that all of our actions are tied to our intentions. So, if you intend something as an act of ibadah, it will be rewarded as an act of ibadah, as long as it follows the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa But if you intend something, for example, you do the same action, even the same action of Salat, but you did it with the intention for stretching or yoga fulfillment or whatever the case may be, that that is what you will get. It would not be considered ibadah. It would not be considered Salat. And therefore, you would have to make your Salat over if it was you were doing that during the time of Salat. If you were doing it just your intention was to stretch or what have you. So that lets us know what? Actions are tied to the intentions. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us <clears throat> that one of the greatest forms of ibadah 
that a person can do is hijra and hijra has several meanings in the shara and one of the meanings is hijra from your sins meaning that you leave off sinfulness coming to good and what's related to that is the other meaning of hijra that you leave off the land of disbelief to the land of belief the land of kufr to the land of iman the land of bid'ah to the land of sunnah so that you're always trying to provide a better environment for you to practice your religion and be closer to the mu'mineen <laughs> and there are many intricate details regarding the issue of hijrah which we will not talk about but we just want to talk about a brief overview of this hadith and its importance with regards to the intention another benefit that we have to be aware of is that as we mentioned this hadith is referring to our intention so when we do acts of ibadah we do it with our hearts alert of what we're doing that we had the intention to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the other criterion for having your deeds accepted in Islam is that they do what? They are in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam How he worshipped That's ibadah That's ibadah sahih That's ibadah bi'idnillah maqbool That's ibadah that is accepted Bi'idnillah by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala That is the ibadah which is mashroor Which is legislated Those are some Small benefits from that hadith and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam.